Hello everyone. For those who are new to my channel, this is Kristen from Christopia Studios. Christopia is the place I go in my head, my utopia, where I enjoy creating and teaching art in multiple forms. In this speed painting tutorial, I'll be giving you tips on how to draw black and white fur in colored pencil. This rendering is of my own little Muppet dog named Pocket. Early in the video, you'll get a glimpse of him hamming it up in the lower right corner and attempting to draw my attention away from his drawing and onto him. My first tip is to start with the best quality paper you can afford. Make sure the paper can take a liquid undercoat. My favorite papers are Clairefontaine Pastel Matte and Fabriano Artistico Hot Press Watercolor Paper. Both of these take multiple layers and can produce beautiful results. However, Pastel Matte is my favorite of these for both colored pencil and pastel pieces. It can take multiple layers of color and you can even use light pencils over dark. It has an abrasive texture, but doesn't feel like sanded papers, even though I find that it's easier to work with for fine details. If you're working on watercolor paper, for example, you'll find that you have to be much more careful about not putting in dark colors where light colors will need to be, as you won't be able to get light details over something that is already quite dark. Also, start with what you can afford in the colored pencil arena as well. If you can only afford to purchase a low cost, cost set like Crayola, you can get a perfectly good result in your practice. However, if you intend to sell your work, I highly recommend that you purchase a set of artist quality pencils, such as Faber-Castell Polychromos or Derwent Lightfast, or another artist set with a good Lightfast rating. This means that your art won't fade over time. If your pencils are not Lightfast, they will fade and your customers will not be happy when that happens. After you've transferred your image down, for colored pencils, I transfer my drawing to the good paper with graphite transfer paper. It comes from multiple colors, but make sure it's an erasable graphite like sor sorrel white paper, for example. Anyway, sorry. After you've transferred your image down, um, you'll want to draw in a little bit of the tonal value areas that you're going to be using. So put a little bit of dark in the dark spots and a little bit of light in the light spots just to give yourself an idea of where those values are going to be. To create depth, do an underpainting. For colored pencils, you'll need a mineral spirit of some sort. I use an odorless mineral spirit that I purchased from my local art store. Some artists have said that they have used 90% isopropyl alcohol as their spirit, but be aware that the fumes from alcohol can cause dizziness, coughing, and other issues, and use it in a very well-ventilated area. You can also use mineral spirits during other parts of your drawing to smooth out sections or blend colors before applying detail. A lot of people are scared of working with black and white fur. I was for a long time. In fact, this is one of my first colored pencil pieces of a black and white dog that I have done, and I've learned a lot from it. My biggest lesson is that you shouldn't be afraid to render black and white fur, because there are multiple colors and tones in the fur. Do not only use black, white, and gray, or your animal will look older than it is. If you look closely, both black and white fur reflect what is around them. You'll often see lots of blues, greens, and violets in the fur of an animal whose picture is taken outside during the daytime, for example, because they're reflecting the sky. In contrast, if you take your photo at sunset or inside near warm lights, the fur is going to reflect those warmer colors of red, orange, and rust. Keep this in mind. Black and white fur can be fun to work with because they reflect so many other colors. You want to consider the quality of the fur as well when working in black and white animals. What I mean by this is that a longer, less shiny fur might be a bit less reflective than say a short-haired black dog with a very glossy coat. This little guy reflected a bit of blue and green undertones, but they were lighter and less prominent than they would have been if his coat was glossy and short instead of shaggy. Remember too that if blues appear to oversaturate your drawing, you can warm them up by adding a little red or umber or a red sort of violet to the piece over the top. In this piece, I could have given more contrast in the areas of his fur, especially the white fur, if I'd used a few warmer colors that were mildly evident in the photograph, especially under his eyes and around his muzzle. I might actually go back and do that.
A good tip for seeing the tones is to open your photo in a simple photo editor and use the color saturation edits to pull out that color. There are many editors available out there. Sometimes I just use my computer's built-in photo program, I use Microsoft Windows, which has mild editing techniques. I also downloaded GIMP for more detailed editing needs, and it's also free. Also, if you're having trouble picking out various colors in the black and white fur, you can use a simple program like Paint and use the eyedropper tool to pick out a certain area and get you a better view of what color is being reflected there. You can then draw that color at the edge of your digital canvas so you can see more closely what it is. I also like to consider contrast in values when rendering black and white fur, so the darks will be dark enough and the lights will be light enough. While I'm happy with this portrait, I feel that I could have gone a little further in getting that contrast. To help with this, you can also use the photo editor to increase the contrast in your photo. I tend to be a little more conservative with getting the darks dark enough, but if I up the contrast in the photograph, I'll be able to see where to increase the contrast in my drawing. You can also lower the color in the photograph to see it in black and white, which will help you pick out those areas of heavier contrast. Just be careful and don't save your good photo in grayscale unless you're saving a copy of it. This has happened to me. It's not pretty. If you have a photo that is underexposed and you don't have the ability to use one with better exposure to get those highlights that are in shadow, you can also use your photo editor to play with light and shadow and try to pick out those highlights a bit better. Consider using a colored paper. In this portrait, I feel that my mistake was going with a light gray rather than a cool color like blue or a warm color like a sienna. Even a green color would have helped to make his fur stand out. In my next colored pencil drawing, I'll likely use a contrasting temperature. For example, if my black and white dog is made up mostly of cool colors like this one with a lot of blues in his fur, I will use a warm colored background like a sienna or a burgundy. If I want a warm colored animal, one that is brown or has red in its coat, I'll probably use a cool background like a green or blue. Keep a piece of glassine paper. That's the stuff that looks like tracing paper, but it's a little fancier. It comes between your sheets of pastel mat, or you can use regular tracing paper. Keep those handy to rest your hand on if you're working the entire piece. Some colored pencil artists prefer to work by sections depending on their dominant hand. For example, since I'm left-handed, I would start in the upper right corner of the piece and work toward the left so I wouldn't smear what's already down. However, I prefer to work on the values of the whole piece at once rather than a small section at a time. I want to get my darks and lights and the shading values down all over my picture and build a layer at a time across the whole thing. Because I do that, I keep the piece of glassine or tracing paper under my hand so I don't do damage to what I've already drawn. Lastly, let's talk about fur texture and movement. While values are very important in getting a good likeness of the animal, fur texture, movement, and detail are equally as important. Pay close attention to the direction the fur is moving and the length of the fur in certain places. It is essential that you closely observe your photo when applying fur or tapering off. For example, in this photo, you can see that the fur in the ears is longer and has a little wave to it, almost like a crimping iron got a hold of it. The muzzle, by contrast, has tiny little white furs tapering to points on his nose. His body is curly and the fur moves in spirals in many different directions. Even when you're laying in values in the beginning, you should pay attention to the fur direction and keep your pencil strokes moving in the same directions. As you get closer to the end of your work, you'll want to get in those little details that make the picture look realistic, like the stray hair here and there, the whiskers of the if the animal has them, or just the textures of the fur overlaying the blended detail below. Those finishing touches will help you get a very detailed and realistic completed portrait. So those are my tips for rendering black and white fur. 
Check out the description box below for more information about this drawing and the supplies I used, as well as links to my other pages, including my Facebook page, my website, and my upcoming brand new Patreon site, which I'm working hard to get content ready for. My Patreon page will provide full-length tutorials on a variety of mediums, including colored pencils, pastels, acrylics, and more. So I hope to see you over there soon. Meanwhile, please hit that thumbs up if you like this demo and subscribe to my channel for more art content. Thanks to my subscribers for helping me push toward my next goal of a thousand subscribers. Have a great day!